Hello again, and welcome back to the Day of Daily Bible Study. Again, you know, I, I had to go through all these now for a second time, so they might all be shorter and faster than I originally would have recorded them. Uh, so I apologize for that. I uh, can't really be helped. Uh, before we look at this next, we're in the Gospel according to Matthew. We're in chapter 26. We're going to pick up in verse 26. Uh, before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, we thank you that you take all the strands of what you have done throughout the Old Testament, and you gather them up, and you apply them in new ways. Uh, Lord, help us to see all that you have to reveal to us. Help us to not uh, forget, because of our oversight, uh, all the aspects that you're bringing up. Lord, watch over us in your Holy Spirit, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So continuing on here with Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper, and this is what we read. It says, While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he had given, when he had given... When he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even though all may fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that this very night, before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I shall not deny you. I will not deny you. All the disciples said the same thing too. Now, before we get to the end of this week, we're going to find out that actually all these disciples do indeed scatter at that point. Um, but I think it's fascinating. This is a, a, such a well-known passage, and it overlaps so much with what I'm used to with the communion liturgy. Um, I think it's important to take these moments to say, when things seem the most familiar, it's almost like it should function as a call to pay all the more careful attention, to see if maybe there's something uh, that, that needs to be noticed. Uh, my New Testament professor has always told us the reason why, you know, half the reason why it's helpful to translate passages is because it forces us to go slowly to take things wor word by word and to really pay attention to precisely which words are being used. Um, and I say that because I think what I was struck by is a couple of things this time. Um, one of them is to highlight the fact that uh, on the one hand, this is uh, Jesus clearly celebrating the Passover. And there's, there's definitely Passover imagery here where Jesus is comparing himself to the lamb. And he's using bread, but it's very clearly using this idea of consuming, this is my body that you consume. Because uh, Passover is not just a matter of sacrificing a lamb, it is the eating of the lamb. It is the con consumption of the lamb that is part of it. And if you don't eat the lamb, you have not participated uh, in the process of Passover. Sometimes people get really iffy about uh, having lamb at kind of a Christianized version of the Seder. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, you now we don't have anything hanging in the balance, but if you were a traditional Jew, uh, you had to eat the lamb. That's part of it. Uh, there's, there's no getting around it. That You have not kept the Passover if you have not eaten the lamb. So there's that thing there. But there's also, Jesus talks about this blood of the covenant. And the blood of the covenant is this idea of blood that is shed as a way to inaugurate the covenant between God and humanity. And I think it's really important because that's kind of, it's drawing on different parts of the Old Testament. And it also, in its own way, is alluding to the Day of Atonement, which I'm especially aware of because of having preached through the book of Hebrews. And this idea of um, the covenant is established through the shedding of blood. And in doing that, one of the things that it does is then prepares the way so that the Day of Atonement can happen so that it can be maintained from year to year. So is this Passover imagery? Is it imagery of the establishment of a covenant? Is it imagery about the Day of Atonement? And the answer seems to be yes. And that's one of the things that's really significant about some of this Old Testament symbolism is that it can take up so much. And Jesus can say in just a few verses, uh, he can call upon a huge length and breadth of what we read about in the Old Testament. It is vitally important to realize that. And, and it's a reminder, once again, as we've seen so often throughout the New Testament and throughout Matthew in particular, how helpful it is to be conversant with the Old Testament uh, to make sure that we're actually understanding what's being said. I also want to highlight here the fact that Jesus uses some language that is both very obvious to us as Christians who live on this side of Easter uh, and Pentecost, but also could have very easily been misunderstood in precisely the ways that we no, probably was misunderstood. And he says things like, I will, not, I, I'm, I'm, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in the Father's, my Father's kingdom. You know, we read that and say, oh, Jesus is going to physically suffer and die and be raised and he's not going to drink wine again until the celebration of God's final kingdom. Obviously, that's what it means. But if you don't expect that, if you expect to be on the cusp of just a day or two from Jesus 
uh, you know, your, this idea that what is the time short for? What's going to happen before kind of the sun sets the next day? Because wine would have been a normal part of life. Well, the Jews are going to go in and overthrow the Romans and take up his rightful place on, on the throne. And so they're going to be the new established kingdom of God. Um, be very easy to interpret it that way. And even this idea of, but after I have been raised, he doesn't say at this particular moment, he'll, he'll still be struck, but not that he will be killed. Uh, but in any case, he does say after I've been raised, which to me as a Christian, throughout Christian history, it's obvious that what Jesus means is that after he has been raised from the dead, he's going to go before you into Galilee. Um, but it's also important to realize that this idea of being raised, I think, could also be this idea of ascending to the throne. Um, so it's one of those things where Jesus can tell you 100% the truth. God can tell us 100% the truth. And if we have not prepared our hearts to receive it, we may still take entirely the other direction. It's important to realize that this is, is the, 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 my understanding is that the ancient Jewish people understood that uh, revelation is not complete until it's received. That just having the right information is not sufficient uh, to really talk about revelation because uh, the revelation of God is the kind of thing where it's more than just information. It also has to be reconciliation. It has to be the overcoming of the frailties of humanity. And I just think it's vitally important that we that we grasp all of that. Uh, and once again, Peter uh, refusing to believe that as well. So it just, it's one of these things where there's so much going on in this institution of the Lord's Supper that I think it's important that we remember it. And it might not be a bad idea to, to read the narrative more frequently in the context of church worship so we can see all these little facets. Well, in any case, that's all for today. Come back and tomorrow we'll have more of the Gospel according to Matthew. Have a good day.